I'm real excited to tell you that we have um, Michelle Axemaker. Uh, she helps heal military veterans and first responders at Warriors Heart who are struggling with addiction, PTSD, and uh, co-occurring issues. Welcome, Michelle. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm really well. Thank you. Good. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this. Sure. So I suffer from PTSD, and I happen to have my own service canine that mitigates some of my anxieties that come with that. And I found Warrior's Heart and their canine program, and it really became a beautiful fit for me to come into their program and start working with their PTSD canine. How awesome. long have you been working with dogs? I have been with dogs professionally about 10 years. Well, and you used to be a zookeeper? That's right. So the first part of my career was working in AZA accredited zoos down in South Florida. Awesome. Well, what I want to know is what is the difference between an emotional support dog and a service dog? Because it seems like anyone can go on the internet, do a class, get a banner, and have a service dog. It is very confusing. So let me clear that up for everybody. An ESA is an emotional support animal, and it's simply a pet that gives you support and makes you feel good just by being there. So they aren't trained to do any specific service-related tasks. Now, you do have to get permission from your mental health provider to get your ESA certificate, certified dog. Now, the service dog is specifically trained to assist people with disabilities, and they're protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Interesting. Well, how do you get a service dog? How do you find the right one? That's kind of the difficult part of what I do. So we have to find these dogs somewhere out in the world, bring them in, and match them with somebody. Here at Warrior's Heart, we're going through our local rescues, our local shelters, and then people from the community can donate their dogs as well into our program. So it's not a specific type of dog. It can be any dog? It can be any dog. So it can be a tiny 10-pound dog all the way up to a Great Dane that weighs over 100 pounds. So we try and decide what kind of behaviors will be the best for the breed, but mostly we're looking for the right attitude, a really outgoing, friendly dog that's also very calm and capable of learning. Interesting. So how, how does the, the um, medical profession actually work with the dog? Like, is there a particular process that they have to go through? So our veterans and first responders will come and spend time at our canine department. We have a couple of different programs for them. If they happen to start feeling a connection to a particular dog, we'll do a whole lot of relationship building exercises between the handler and the canine. As they get to know me and the dog, I'll begin to train them how to teach this dog to mitigate their PTSD anxieties. And how does, how does the person, the first responder, the person that's just getting out of the military, how mm -hmm. does that person find this program? So Warrior's Heart is an addiction and PTSD treatment center. They can find us on the internet. They can call us directly. If it's the right fit for them, they can come on in and join our canine program at any time during their, during their time here. And how long have you been with them? How long have you been with Warrior's Heart? I started last September. Oh, so not as not very long. And how no, long have they I been in it. how long have Warrior's Heart been in service? Warrior's Heart has been serving our community for five years. Oh great. How how do people that need this service how, how do they how do they come into the program? Like do they, they come searching for you? Can they be referred? Do you mean Warrior's Heart in general yes. or our canine program? Both, both. To get to get to the to the canine program, um, if they go through Warrior's Heart, I'm sure they would funnel them through. But how do they really f go about finding? If you know of someone who needs this help, where do you send them? 
Sorry about so that. So if somebody has some chemical dependency and PTSD issues or co-occurring issues, they will call Warrior's Heart or sometimes Warrior's Heart will reach out to them through a family member. And if they meet the criteria and we can help them, they can come up here and we'll work with them and try and help them live a little bit more healthy, better life. It's wonderful. That is wonderful. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about the ranch. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we have Michelle still with us. So hi, Michelle. Welcome back. Thank you. So I want to know a little bit about the ranch. Like where is the ranch that you guys do this whole event at? We are in Bandera, Texas, which is the Texas Hill Country, and it's located kind of between Austin and San Antonio, Texas. Awesome. And so can anybody, how, I'm still kind of perplexed as to how do people find out about this program? Is it like something that the military offers, they have the information, or how does first responders get a hold of this information? Sure. So the the easiest way to find out all of the information about the ranch is through our website, warriorsheart.com. There you go. That's what I was looking for. So, Michelle, we appreciate you being on the show today. Tell us where people can find you and how they can uh, get questions answered if they uh, have some. Sure. So, like I said, the best way to find out all of the information about the multiple programs that we offer is through warriorsheart.com. But if people are also looking for a way to donate to people in need or help people out while they're trying to get their service dog, they can contact the Warriors Heart Foundation, which is our not-for-profit, and we do accept deductible donations as well. And can they give a specific donation, like if somebody wanted to buy a dog, as an example? They they absolutely can. All they have to do is earmark it for our canine department. That's so cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. We appreciate you. And what a great um, thing that you're doing with Warriors, um, Warriors Heart. And we just love that you're taking the time and to help all the military and the first responders with all of their struggles. Yes, it's really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and talking a little bit about Warrior's Heart. We all really love what we get to do here.